Dr. Janet uh, Gerson is a peace researcher and peace educator. She is education director at the International Institute on Peace Education. She's the winner of the 2014 Peace and Justice Studies Association Graduate Student Paper Award for her dissertation, Public Deliberation on Global Justice, the World Tribunal on Iraq. She was co-director of the Peace Education Center, Teachers College, Columbia University in New York City, where she taught peace education and conflict courses. Hello, thank you to Code Pink for uh, establishing this tribunal process within the United States, the place that also initiated and followed through on the destruction and war and occupation of Iraq. We need to take responsibility here, and this is an excellent step. Uh, regarding the costs and lies, uh, I'm going to speak about them slightly differently. The lies cost us many of our illusions and our attempts to stop the war, to stop the initiation of the war, to end the war, and to stop the occupation were thwarted with our usual means. The largest worldwide protests ever in the history of humanity failed to stop the invasion. The US Congress failed to stop the invasion. And uh, even being sued by the Center for uh, Con Congressional, uh, the Center for Constitutional Rights, sorry, uh, for passing that resolution, our justice system failed to follow through on the U.S. Congress's act uh, of illegal, supporting illegal aggression. The U.N. failed not only to stop the war, but it subsequently appointed the initiators, the attackers, as the occupation administrators. So official authorities in many ways failed. And again, the means of using your universal jurisdiction also failed because cases were brought in, country, in uh, Germany and tried to be brought in Belgium and Canada and Australia uh, against US use of torture and the US use of um, well, illegal aggression. And those efforts also have, to this point, failed. So these means which we look to and, and have uh, official credibility, credibility failed, actually, to serve us. This is why this Code Pink Tribunal is so valuable. We need new kinds of political action and experimentation, alternatives for which we can move. We need the creativity, the energy, and the um, flamboyance <laughs> to engage people that has been modeled and, and uh, encouraged by Code Pink. I'm going to give the example of the precedent, another uh, organized as another uh, uh, very admirable global civil society action, which you've just heard about, the World Tribunal on Iraq. The World Pi Tribunal on Iraq, we, I think we have to all work on helping the public understand the difference between tribunals and commissions and actual courts, and what's the difference between a national court and an, and an international court, for example, that doesn't have the same kinds of uh, uh, persecution mechanisms and, and uh, follow through. We nevertheless need to use these public organized events to bring together alternative kinds of knowledge that are closed out by the official governmental stories. And they also serve as alternative kinds of framings and understandings. They further serve to coordinate social and political action in new and influential ways. The World Tribunal on Iraq uh, started from the, as Aicha Kabutu said, from the 
global civil society anti-war movements. People quickly gathered after uh, six weeks after the attack when Bush declared that the war had been, that a mission had been accomplished. People quickly gathered and decided to make a tribunal uh, project followed by three meetings, followed by 20 hearings in different cities, each looking at different uh, dimensions of the war. And not only that, but each country, each commission looked at each country's responsibility. For example, Germany rejected the war. Nevertheless, the Frankfurt airport was used to launch attacks in Iraq. And each uh, commission looked at each city, each hearing, looked at ways that corporations in their countries were also benefiting from the war. An important way to look, not only the costs of the war, but who profits and gains from uh, initiating destruction. If we think of capitalism by dispossession, as, as uh, David Harvey says, and destruction, it's much, uh, it's profitable to destroy whole systems and then distribute contracts to rebuild them. Okay, so 20 cities hearings were then organized into a culminating session which brought all the people together. Not everyone, in fact, there were many, many uh, uh, different ideologies, many different intentions. The biggest divide were the international jurists and lawyers, incredible radical people, and the core organizers who were anarchists who didn't believe in international law at all. <laughs> Yet, they juxtaposed these two strands throughout so that they modeled a kind of deliberation, which we no longer see in US governance, where different views are equally validated and they don't try to diminish, but rather enhance and talk to each other. And this is a, a really important part of these tribunals, not just to give evidence, not to just to give facts and critique, but also the practice of proposals, of argumentation and justifications, along with a real practice in public of deliberation, the kind of expectations we expect from our official authorities and which they are failing us so powerfully at this time. So I wholly support the demand of Code Pink in this tribunal for a commission from our official authorities in which they may perhaps be able to reclaim legitimacy in our eyes, to reclaim uh, uh, a sense of accountability and viable action on behalf of the real problems we have to address, geopolitical, uh, eco -poli ecological, political, and neoliberal obstacles that we're facing. Thank you. <laughs>